said, we need to understand the process setup, whether it's a batch mixing or a continuous mixing. So in a batch mixing process, all the ingredients are loaded into the mixer together or in a predefined sequence and mixed until a homogeneous material is produced and discharged from the mixer in a single lot. Where do we use batch mixing? When, when production quantities are small, batch mixing is preferred. Strict, strict control of mix composition is required. Many formulations are to be produced on the same production line. Ingredient properties change over time and compensation must be made on a batch to batch basis. And where it is required to identify a batch for further follow up, such as pharmaceutical applications or for food products. Now let's look at continuous mixing. So in continuous mixing, the material flows steadily from an upstream process into the mixer. It is retained into the mixing vessel for a specific period of time and then discharges at the same flow rate for downstream handling. The weighing, loading, mixing and discharge steps occur simultaneously and continuously. The process of charging the material in a continuous mixer is extremely critical and can significantly affect the quality of the final mix. Where do we prefer continuous mixing? Well, when large quantities of a single product, product are to be mixed or in a continuous process line requiring high production rates, strict batch integrity is not critical. And smoothing out batch product variations is required. Most mixing applications are batch type. There are few applications which could be continuous. So what are having understood the batch and continuous mixing and the criteria for selection of mixing equipment, the broad criteria, I would say, let's look at what are the factors that are considered while design of mixing equipment. So the design of mixing equipment involves three aspects of design. There is a process design. We then need to consider the mixing characteristics. And finally, the mechanical design. Process design is, is most critical because the materials that are to be mixed, the process that has to be followed for mixing, you know, whether there is a temperature that has to be maintained or certain processing conditions that need to be maintained. When we talk about mixing characteristics, we refer to the, the vessel geometry, the type of mixing impellers, liquid mixing, you have a lot of internal mixing elements such as baffles or internal heating or cooling coils. So all those aspects define the mixing characteristics or the mixer characteristics. And finally, the mechanical design which includes calculations of, for example, the shaft diameter. We are talking about processing under vacuum, then calculating the thickness of the vessel in which the mixer mixing element will be placed. So design of the mixing equipment has several aspects and all of these need to be considered. And each one of them is critical for a successful mixer production. And it's also important to understand an important element of the operating cost of, of the mixers, and that is, that is the power consumption. And power consumption depends upon, again, the application and the type of mixer. So the factors which influence the power consumption is type of the agitator or the mixing blade, the sweep diameter of the agitator, the speed of rotation, the vessel geometry and attachments, density of material being mixed, and the viscosity of the mix. All of these factors are to be considered. There are ways and means to estimate the power consumption. Estimating the power consumption in case of liquids is fairly simple. It has been very well studied. and 
using the power number equation, you can actually estimate the power required for mixing. When it gets to solid blending applications or high viscosity mixers, calculating the power can be an extremely complex exercise. And in such cases, it, the power is estimated based on some empirical guidelines and more importantly on experience and trials that are conducted at the lower scales or the pilot scales or the lab scales. Another important parameter to be looked at is the scale up of mixers. So when we scale up from a lab level to a production level, there are certain elements that need to be maintained while scale up. The first is geometric similarity. In case of geometric similarity, the dimensions of the mixing equipment are maintained in a constant ratio. So as we can see, we have a one liter beaker and then we have a thousand liter mixing vessel. In such cases, the impeller diameter to the vessel diameter the length of the vessel to the diameter of the vessel, such ratios are maintained. When such ratios are maintained, we say we have maintained geometric similarity. The next is kinematic similarity. What do we mean by kinematic similarity? Well, in case of kinematic similarity, the mixer operating parameters, one of the critical operating parameters is, is the impeller tip speed or volumetric flow per shear. So the tip speed of the impeller is, or, or it's also called as the peripheral speed, is calculated as pi d n, where d is the diameter of the impeller and n is the rotational speed. So between the lab scale and the production scale, the tip speeds are to be maintained constants. When such uh, matters are taken care of, we maintain kinematic similarities. For dynamic similarity, uh, the, the Reynolds number, the Froud number, the power per unit volume, that needs to be maintained. And dynamic similarity is only possible when you maintain geometric and kinematic similarities. 